Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy Collects Ghost Rider. And I figured while we're waiting for, you know, comments to come in for uh, the last episode where I asked you guys to vote on which three comics of the first year of Ghost Rider you wanted me to talk about, I, I did have this Lego set. And as you know, I do work at Lego and uh, it's a really fun job. This is a set though that we do not make anymore. I bought this maybe like two or three years ago and I've been waiting to do this show so it's just been sitting in my closet in the box. So you can't really buy this unless you find it online for like probably double or triple the price even. Um, I just thought it was so cool that Lego actually made a character like Ghost Rider. And I would say he's very much designed off of the Dan Ketch version, which is why I'm including this uh, on the show. Because uh, even though it doesn't say if it's Dan Ketch or Johnny Blaze, it's kind of ambiguous. Uh, the bike, definitely the design with the big shield on the front of it and everything is very much inspired by Dan Ketch. And it also comes with the Hobgoblin, which is a character that Spider-Man fought, um, you know, against when G uh, Ghost Rider showed up in his comic uh, drawn by Todd McFarlane. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. It's the you know, first time I think Lego made a Hobgoblin, maybe first in ever time, but definitely the first in ever time they made a Ghost Rider character. So I loved it. And this was like a $20 set when it came out. So I don't know how much it would be now if you're trying to track it down. But uh, if you are and you're a hardcore fan out there of Ghost Rider, I would say pick it up. It's it's definitely worth it. Of course, I'm biased. I work at Lego, so I'll be upfront about that. Um, but it's it's pretty neat. And it comes with a little Bleecker Street sign and a second Avenue sign, which I'm going to put right back here with my Sanctum Sanctorum, which obviously is on Bleecker Street. Uh, and so, yeah, so this is this is a neat set. I like it a lot. So I figured, you know what, we'll open it up. We'll, we'll build it up and we'll talk about it a little bit. And uh, this way we have something fun to do while we're waiting for uh, votes to come in on last episode. So without further ado, let's crack this guy open and build him up. So bag one is complete, and as you can see here, we have our little Bleecker Street corner, which is awesome. It comes with a Daily Bugle uh, newsstand here, like with the little uh, newspapers in there. And then on this side, we have Frontline, which, uh, again, another great comic book reference. I, I like that. Uh, you know, obviously, when uh, Lego works with these companies like Marvel and DC and stuff, they try to put in these little fun Easter eggs, and they, you know, they try to put in a little bit of lore and a little bit of storytelling in these, uh, you know, sets, which is awesome. And it's, this is such a minor detail. They could have done anything. They could have done a generic, you know, Lego newspaper thing, but they did Frontline, which is a really cool reference uh, to uh, comic book fans who have been reading, you know, Marvel throughout the maybe uh, 2000s and into the early 2010s. And then, of course, the Daily Bugle where Peter Parker works. Uh, it'd be cool to get a Daily Globe one uh, at some point, but I think that would probably confuse the average person. So if someone's buying this and they're like, oh, I know who Spider-Man is. And they see Daily Bugle on one side and Daily Globe on the other. You know, they might be like, what's going on? Even Frontline's a little bit of an obscure reference like Daily Globe. But I feel like at this point, Daily Globe is more of an obscure reference because it only connects to Eddie Brock and not really anything else. Whereas Frontline has like a storyline, you know, to it uh, for the most part. But uh, yeah, so you get this, you get the little trash can with the stuff in it. And uh, you get some extra flame for when Ghost Rider's driving down a street. You know, he gets these little flame pieces like that he leaves in his wake as he drives by. And then we get Spider-Man here, and I think this is one of the first sets that introduced this piece, this clear piece. And it puts, uh, you know, allows Spider-Man to put webbing in. It's gotten more advanced now. You can actually see up here in the background a little bit. Uh, if I can, yeah, there you go. Uh, you can see Miles Morales and, and Ben Riley and stuff up on the roof there. And they have different uh, webbings, like more complicated looking webbings. So, uh, yeah, the, you know, it's, it's changed a lot over the years. 
but uh, still this piece is cool. I like the 3D effect it gives there, like that, uh, where it's coming at you. Um, so yeah, we got Spider-Man here, and then this is Hobgoblin, and I'm going to assume this is the Philip Mackendale version of the Hobgoblin, mainly because his cape, his board design a little bit, um, yeah, I mean, I know there's been different Hobgoblins. Ned Leeds, you know, was rumored to be one, but you had Kingsley, who was like kind of the main first Hobgoblin, and he had different versions, but again, I feel like this has a big 90s reference to it. There's a comic book cover of Ghost Rider that has, it's drawn by Todd McFarlane, it's, you know, it's a Spider-Man cover, I should say, but it has Ghost Rider on it and Hobgoblin, and uh, I this kind of feels like a reference to that, even though it's kind of from a Spider-Man cartoon, like they put the Spider-Man branding on it from, you know, the cartoon series right there, you see Spider-Man in the corner, um, so it's, you know, not officially from the comics, but it definitely feels like it, it feels like that Todd McFarlane cover come to life as a Lego set, so uh, that's bag one, that's everything that includes with it, but we still have bag two, we got to build Ghost Rider himself and his motorcycle, so let's get to it. the spirit of vengeance himself all complete and uh auto focusing in and out there <laughs> there you go uh, so you can see him he looks so good i love the design on this the flame is stuck to his head i forgot about that because i was actually going to replace it with um hades i have a hades figure and uh, i was going to replace the ghost rider hair uh, so i can make dan catch blue ghost rider so i have the hades figure here but the hades hair is also glued onto his head. <laughs> so I have to figure something else out, or maybe I'll find a way to, to pry the head out of there without damaging the, the hair too much. Uh, but yeah, at some point I'd like to put the blue hair on him and make him, uh, you know, the blue hair version of Danny Ketch or the blue flame version of Danny Ketch. Uh, but yeah, this bike is really good. I love the detail on it. Uh, Lego did a phenomenal job with this one. Um, and again, yeah, I'm biased, sure, but, uh, but also going to be honest with you. Uh, as a Ghost Rider fan, I'm very happy with the level of detail on this bike. You get the flames here, uh, you know, two rows of them, two rows on the front as well. Uh, this, like, little scaly armored thing is really nice that they do here on the sides, and they do it on the seat cover, too. Um, they add, like, this layer of armor, kind of, uh, these, like, uh, it kind of looks like scales from like a dragon. Um, but yeah, I like that design a lot. It's really, really cool. It's a good use of those pieces, uh, and it adds some kind of texture to this, you know, so it's not just like this flat motorcycle. Because Lego makes a lot of motorcycles from like Ninjago to like the recent Captain America from Endgame. Uh, they do a lot of like vehicles like this. This one I feel like has a lot of personality to it while also capturing what makes Ghost Rider work. And I like these little discs on the side to add some level there. I mean, I guess you could have put some blue studs in there and then clip those onto that to make the circle there too if you wanted it at that joint. But it doesn't matter. I mean, like I'm just thinking of alternatives, you know, but it's it's held together really well, which is nice. Um, and they, yeah, it's very sturdy and they use a good use of Technic parts in it as well. And then of course, Ghost Rider can just sit right in it like that. And you can take the chain off him and then boom, there he goes. Ghost Rider motorcycle. 
hero. <laughs> if you're a Henry Rollins fan, uh, I'm sorry I butchered that song for you. Uh, but yeah, so you get a little Bleecker Street here, the corner of Bleecker Street and uh, Second, and then you get Ghost Rider with it, Spider-Man, Hobgoblin. This is a really good set. Like I said, it's uh, if you're out there and you're a collector of Ghost Rider, it's worth picking up now before it gets, you know, definitely, you know, because it's retired, but you could probably still find it for like under 50 bucks right now. But, uh, you know, in another year or two, chances are you won't be able to at all. So if you want a Lego Ghost Rider, I would say now's the time to look online and try to pick one up because uh, I don't know if we'll ever make them again at Lego. I would like to think we would, uh, but I don't know. And when the new show comes out, I don't know if it's animated, may, you know, the Hulu show and, you know, we get the rights from Marvel and stuff like maybe we could do more, but I have no idea. You know, I just I'm just a guy who works in sales. I don't know anything about, uh, you know, the design stuff and what they come up with at Lego. Uh, but uh, it would be nice to see more Ghost Rider stuff down the line, or at least one set to reflect the new cartoon or show or live action, whatever it's going to be on Hulu. Um, I, I can't wait to see how it's going to come to life. But uh, hopefully we have some kind of set to reflect that at that time. But for now, you know, this wraps this episode up. Also, like I said, I, you know, I showed this at the beginning a little bit um, in the uh, when I was doing the speed, you know, speeding it up and showing that footage. But there is a comic book here that has Ghost Rider in it. And since it's probably Dan Ketch, or at least it looks kind of, I mean, it has Johnny Blaze elements too, but it has a lot of Dan Ketch elements. I was like, well, this will go in my Dan Ketch comic collection now. So uh, yeah, these little comic books used to come with these characters. And so during this set, there was like a, a, a white tiger, you know, I think was Spider-Man fighting a, uh, uh, Doc Ock, so that was like that's like two issues of a comic. Then there's Spider Woman back here, um, and uh, and Ben Riley, and that's like fighting the Green Goblin on the bridge with uh, Gwen Stacy and Craven, I think. Uh, I think where they put Aunt May here, they took they didn't put Gwen Stacy on the bridge, <laughs> but they did put a sticker that said like uh, Peter loves Gwen or something like that on the bridge, um, which I thought was cute but also dark in a way too. But uh, yeah, so they they like little two page comics in here, but I figured since two of the pages kind of have Dan Ketch or at least Ghost Rider on them. It deserves to be in my collection. So I'm glad after all these years I was finally able to open this up and share it with you guys. So let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to watch our last episode, episode 2 of Seek and Destroy Collects Ghost Rider, where you can vote out of the books I show you in that episode. You can vote in the comments of which three you want me to do full reviews of. So uh, that's why I wanted to do this episode to kind of fill in that time, give you more time to vote. Uh, and the pretty much if the one person votes, then I'm going to do those three, issue, uh, three issues. So make sure you get your votes in if you want me to talk about specific issues of Ghost Rider and books he's appeared in. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and let me know what you think of this set down in the comments below. I'll see you in hell. Peace.